Alrighty, good morning. So we're taking a bit of a break from David and we're jumping into our Easter devotionals, which will be running through um, until Saturday and then Sunday. Um, Easter. So I wonder if you mind turning with me to Matthew chapter 26 and we're going to read from verse 17. It says, On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, My teacher says, My appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go, just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be, it would be better for him if he had not yet been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And so we looked a little bit at this when we spoke about communion um, a while ago in our devotions. And um, we're going to be having communion uh, tomorrow morning together as connect groups, uh, just celebrating that moment together. So I'd like to take a slightly different take on this text this morning, because I do think that there is, there is a way that when we look at Easter, it's very easy for it just to become another moment or another you know, like a sort of a highlight of the year when we do the Easter eggs and, and whatever kind of things. I do understand that um, this is not a staycation for everyone at the moment. I know some guys are really, really working hard and they're really looking forward to this weekend because it's going to be a, a legit holiday for them. A lot of the guys in the, in, uh, the essential services and, and other industries have really been flat out. They've, um, I think our companies have got access to us in a way they've never had before. And guys are working ridiculous hours. And we're looking forward to taking a bit of a break. And that's wonderful that we can have a bit of a break. But this is the thing. If you look at Christmas and Easter, these are um, probably the two biggest moments for us as Christians. But nowhere in the Bible does it tell us that we have to celebrate these moments. And I think if we forget why we're celebrating these moments, we forget what Christmas and Easter, and specifically Easter now, means. Uh, and we just go about and we, and we enjoy the, the holiday and, and just and celebrate the, the festival without actually thinking about what it means. I think it's as religious and as pagan as any other festival around the world. It has no meaning. And we have to know what the meaning is behind what we do because what we want to do is live our lives by faith. We don't just want to go through the motions. And so just to kick it off quickly, and I think a way to prepare our hearts before Easter, and I don't want to make this a big heavy but I think there's a reason for us to celebrate Easter, and that's really what I want to talk about. So to kick it off, I, I wonder what it must have felt like to sit with Jesus at that table. I mean, to be with Jesus all the time would have been scary as all heck, because he knows what you're thinking all the time. You know, there's no like, you know, running your own agenda in Jesus's crew. Like, Jesus knows what everyone's thinking. And time and time again, he exposed it in his disciples, not in a nasty way, but just he exposed their hearts. And I think that's incredibly difficult. But there's two things about Jesus here, um, what it must have been like to be with him, uh, like one of his disciples. The first thing is that he knew everything. It seemed like everything was pre-planned without him ever having been there beforehand. So they said, he says to them, like, okay, it's time for Passover. And they're like, okay, what are we going to do? And he's, and he's so direct. He's like, you've got to go to this house and you speak to this guy and whatever. Jesus hadn't gone ahead to prepare all of that. He just knew because he knows all things. And maybe just an encouragement to us. When we sit and we look at the beginning of this time of Easter, God, God knew all things. He knew man's state. He knew our fallenness. He knew our brokenness. He knew our inability to save ourselves. And so he sent his son Jesus as a solution. And friends, looking forward, um, there's a lot of doubts about the future at the moment. But Jesus doesn't have to go and quickly make a plan because he's falling apart or he's stressed about where things are going. He just knows. 
And he already knows what the future holds. He already knows what it's going to look like, just like he did in this story. He already knows and he's already taking, making plans and taking action on your behalf now for then. It, your future is already in his hands. And I think there's something hugely um, peaceful and um, it just inspires faith inside of us that I don't have to stick my head in the sand and just hope and pretend. No, Jesus exists outside of time and space. He's already there in my future planning. He's gone ahead and he knows what he he knows what he's doing. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is this, that Jesus knew exactly what was going on in the disciples' hearts. And I think that's really tricky for not only the disciples, but also for us. And maybe this is part of our prep ahead of Easter. We hate to be exposed. You know, if your motive is exposed on something. I think sometimes with Cindy and I, my wife, we, we're fighting about something. And Cindy will point out something where I'm wrong. And I get irritated with her. And I know I'm wrong, and she knows I'm wrong, but the thing I'm irritated about is that I feel exposed. It's not that I feel like I'm right. I know I'm wrong, but just I hate being exposed. I hate that feeling of, of feeling like my motives are seen, you know, my what's really the front stuff going on in my heart is, out, heart is out in the open. And we hate for people to see our weaknesses and our motives. But something like this time of being um, at our homes under in, in lockdown, um, what it does is it exposes what's really going on inside of our hearts. In times of plenty and ease, it's, it's a little bit like what's going on in our heart can be kind of covered over. And that's grace, you know, uh, because there's enough provision and there's time and there's lots, you know, there's, there's lots of good stuff going on. We've got a lot of freedoms. What's really going on in our heart kind of sits covered. But in these moments, what's really inside of our heart begins to come to the surface. Maybe the fear of provision, our anger and our frustrations about things. It's like the squeezes on and what's in our heart starts to come out. Our insecurity, um, our fear of being alone, all those kind of things begin to bubble to the surface. What's re what our heart really feels is on show right now. And this story tells us that Jesus exposes the disciples' hearts. He says, I know that one of you is going to betray me. And all the disciples are, you know, but Lord, surely not. And when the disciples fall asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane, um, Jesus looks at them and his answer is always himself. That he would come and he would be their provision. That they don't have to be alone because he promised them I'll never leave you nor forsake you. When we look at our, our sin and our insecurity and our brokenness, Jesus says that my body will be broken so that you can receive healing. And uh, even in sickness, Jesus said by his stripes we are healed. That he has the forgiveness of sin. He gives us the power to change. That we aren't bound and stuck in our old ways of thinking. Maybe you felt bound in a particular way of thinking. Like we spoke yesterday. And you, you're fearful about things. Jesus can come. And he can bring change. Uh, he is our provision. And he adopts us into the family of God. And So maybe I can ask you this. Just ahead of this, um, um, this Easter weekend. Maybe to take a moment if you can. With God and say Lord. I know that you can see my heart already. And I know that you can see what's going on inside you. And I don't want to play this game with you where I'm pretending I'm paying you lip service, but I'm not being honest about this. Lord, I want to bring you my whole heart. And I want to say thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. I want to, I want to be as vulnerable and as honest as I can be with you. And trust you, Lord, because I know that you are the answer to all these things. It's a great place to start because that's what the cross was. The cross was an answer for our human condition. And for God so loved the world that he sent his son. He saw our human condition and wanted to send Jesus as the answer. So really looking forward to um, being together as connect groups tomorrow morning. As we have communion and celebrate this, um, this incredible uh, moment in our Christian calendar where we remember what Jesus has done for us.